Okay, let's look at some examples and non-examples of subspaces. So here's our first one. I'm gonna take V to be the set of two by two matrices with the usual operations, right? Matrix addition and matrix scalar, uh, scalar multiplication for matrices. Um, and I wanna ask which of the following of these things are, sorry, so this is my global setup, are vector spaces that have the same operations that V does. So which of these are subspaces? And I'm gonna use the subspace theorem to check. So first of all, we're gonna take W1. It's gonna be the set of two by two matrices where the trace of A is zero. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, is it non-empty? Well, that means I need to find a vector uh, matrix in here that has a trace of zero, right? So if I look at you know one, negative one, zero, zero, that's in W1 because when I take its trace, it's the sum of the diagonal entries. The trace of that guy is one minus one or zero. Even easier often is to just check to see that the zero vector from V satisfies the condition for your subspace. So the zero vector in this vector space is really the zero matrix. So probably a sensible thing to check is that zero, 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 zero um, is also in W1 because the trace of that guy is also the zero matrix. Or sorry, it's the number zero, not the zero matrix, right? This is why good notation is important. Okay, so we've got that it's non-empty. Now we wanna check that it's closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication from the vector space V. So let's suppose that uh, let's say A is the matrix A, B, C, D, B is the matrix E, F, G, H, where A through H are real numbers. They're all in W1. Then if I add them together, well, what do I know? They're in W1, which means that the trace of A, which is A plus D, is zero. And the trace of B, which is E plus H, that's also zero. And when I add A plus B, I get a matrix that's got entries A plus E, F plus B, or B plus F, C plus G, and D plus H. And the trace of A plus B is gonna give me A plus E plus D plus H. And I can use the associative property of real number addition to sort of put these as A plus D and E plus H. And that's zero plus zero or zero. So we're happy, right? We've got that we're closed under addition here. Okay, well, let's check scalar multiplication. So now I'm gonna take A from above and I'm gonna suppose K is a real number. And if I look at K times A, I get the matrix KA, KB, KC, KD. And when I take the trace of K times A, I get that this is, uh, Ka plus Kd, and if I factor a K out, I get K times A plus D. And because A was in W, A plus D was zero, so this gives us zero. And so we're happy there as well. We see that this is a subspace, or this is a subspace of V because it's non-empty, it's closed under the addition from V, and it's closed under the scalar multiplication from V. All right, you have some homework problems that look a lot like this next one. So if you look at number two here, let's say that we take W2. Um, it's gonna be the set of two by two matrices. So remember V is still our big vector space that overarching all of this. So it's the set of two by two matrices with the usual operations. 
W2 is also going to look at the trace, but it's going to say now that the trace is pi. And one of your homework problems is going to be, is this a subspace? So you've got to see, is this thing closed? Is it non-empty? Is it closed under vector addition? And is it closed under scalar multiplication? All right. Well, we've got some more here. Uh, what about the set of two by two matrices where the diagonal so if I take the II entries, the diagonal entries are zero. When I, so if the I is one or I is two. And so your little exercise here is to check that it's non-empty. Then you wanna check that it's closed under our vector addition. And then you wanna check that it's closed under scalar multiplication, you should get that all of these work out and that this is a vector space, but I'm leaving that for you to check. All right, let's get a little more exciting here. Um, how about W4? It's the set of two by two matrices. No restrictions on what these matrices are. And circle plus is going to be, if I take two matrices, A, B, C, D. And so A, B, C, D is one matrix. And I do this vector operation, E, F, G, H. This operation is defined to be A, E, B, F, C, G, D, H. And scalar multiplication is defined as K times A, B, C, D is A to the K, B to the K, C to the K, D to the K. So it's exponentiation. And our question is, is this a subspace of V? And we have to admit that, well, it can't be because the operations are different. So in order to be a subspace of something, we're saying not, not only are you a subset, but you have the same algebra, right? Your operations are exactly the same. So it's a little bit stronger than just saying, oh, it's a vector space that lives inside another vector space. It can't just be a vector space living inside a ve another vector space. They have to have compatible operations, meaning the operations on the big space, when you restrict them down to your littler space, should give you the operations in your littler space. All right, how about, well, I guess there's another question we could ask, sorry about number four before we move on. We could, we could ask, is it a vector space? And that's a pretty good question. And if we wanna check that it's a vector space, well, guess what? Now we've gotta check all 10 of those things again because it, we're not living inside something we know is a vector space anymore. So we've gotta check all 10 things to answer this question. Because we can't use the subspace theorem. It's not a subset of a vector space um, of something that we know is a vector space with exactly the same operations as that larger vector space had. OK, a few more sets to look at here. Let's take W5 to be the set of two by two matrices where A is non-singular. All right, well, one of the things that you showed was that you can take two non-singular matrices, add them together and get something that's singular. So if I take A, B and W5, A plus B might be singular. That's something you showed in a writing assignment. And a little example is take one, one, zero, zero, and add it to negative one, zero, zero, negative one. You get the zero matrix out of that, but both matrices that you started with have inverses. So 
that's an example that shows it's not closed under the addition in our vector space. Um, we know it's not empty, right? Because we've got the identity matrix in there, for instance. So um, A equals I2 is in W, which means that it's not, or W5, which means it's not empty. It's a non-empty set. All right, what if we take W6 and we make it A in the set of two by two matrices where A is non-singular, and the determinant of A is zero. Ha <laughs> ha, we know that that's an empty set. There's no matrices in there, right? If your determinant is zero, you have to be singular. You can't be non-singular and have a zero determinant. That's, so that's what our big theorem of linear algebra says. Right, your determinant is zero if and only if you're singular. So that's what we mean by checking that the set is not empty. You might have these conditions that you're using to sort of pick elements out of your set and you wanna make sure that your conditions aren't so restrictive that nothing satisfies them. All right, and the last thing I wanna think about is the set W7. It's gonna look like a set of two by two matrices where A is a linear combination of the two matrices 0, 1, 0, 2, and 1, 1, 3, 0. Not 1, 1, 30 something, 1, 1, 3, 0. And my claim is that this is a vector space. So maybe we should take a second to recall what it means to be a linear combination. That means that there exist scalars A and B in R where A is equal to A times the first matrix plus B times the second matrix. So it's anything I can build by scaling these matrices and adding them together. So it's gonna be non-empty. If I take A and B to be zero, so let me clear up that notation a little bit. So if I take A equals B equals zero, that means that uh, I get the zero vector in here, right? And so zero is in my vector space. We know that zero times a matrix is zero. We proved that. We also know that if I add two things like this together, so let's say that I've got A is that thing and let's take B to be B times the same thing plus C or not B, let's make it C and D, sorry. So C times zero, one, zero, two and D times one, one, three, zero. If I take A plus B, I wanna show that's in my vector space or my subset so that I can come that it's a subspace. And what that's going to be equal to after we use some properties of matrix algebra, so properties of matrix algebra in between these equal signs, I can pull together the A and the C because they're both scaling 0, 1, 0, 2. So I get A plus C times 0, 1, 0, 2 plus B plus D times 1, 1, 3, 0. Uh, a plus C is still a real number. B plus D still a real number. So this is a linear combination. It's a new linear combination of 0, 1, 0, 2 and 1, 1, 3, 0. And then we do the same thing for scalar multiplication. So we've got non-empty, we've got closed under our addition from B, which is regular matrix addition. And then we wanna show closed under scalar multiplication, which is regular matrix scalar multiplication. So if I take K times 
a, I'm going to get ka times 0, 0102 plus kb times 1130, which is again a linear combination of 0, 0102 and 1130. All right, so awesome. This is a subspace. And I'm bringing back this idea of linear combinations because they're going to be really important to vector spaces in general. We're going to define things in terms of linear combinations. And we're going to be interested in, you know, like what kinds of linear combinations can I make that get me zero? Um, the very last two spaces that I want to think about, I know that I've got a lot of examples here, but I guess I'll call it eight and nine. Is V a subspace of itself? Well, it satisfies the definition of a subset because all the elements of V belong to V. That's sort of a tautology. It's non-empty because it's got a zero vector and it's closed under scalar multiplication and vector addition. So the answer here is a big fat yes. Every vector space is a subspace of itself. The other question, so that's kind of like the biggest subspace that a vector space can have, the whole vector space. If you think about sort of the other end, what's the smallest? If I take the set containing just the zero vector, I want to ask myself, is this a subspace? So I ask, is it not empty? Well, yeah, zero is in there. Is it closed under addition? Well, zero plus zero is zero. Is it closed under scalar multiplication? We proved that if you scale zero by anything, you still get zero. So yes, it's also a subspace. And because every vector space has itself and the zero space as a subspace, these are called trivial. Not because they're like easy or unimportant, but they're just a little bit uninteresting in that it's not a mystery to go out and you run into a vector space and you're like, are you a subspace of yourself? It's like, well, yeah, every vector space has itself as a subspace, it's trivial. Um, so in that sense, it's just like, it's kind of like a boring question to ask because we already know the answer. So these are called the trivial subspaces of a vector space V. If V is the zero subspace, or sorry, if zero is, let me try that one more time. If V is the zero vector space, then it only has one subspace, which is itself the zero vector space. If V has got some non-zero vectors in it, then it's got at least two vector spaces, subspaces itself or the zero vector space. And there might be some things in between. All right, that is it for subspaces. We will talk more about linear combinations when we talk about how to determine if there are matrices like 0, 1, 0, 2, and 1, 1, 3, 0, where we know that every element of some subspace is of M22, for instance, is a linear combination of these things. And that gets us into the idea of span, which is coming up next.